What is going on guys? Grave here today. I'd like to show you my PVE Hunter Glaive bill. This is just a bill that is so much fun. I kind of want to share it with you guys. You can take this kind of as a template and fit it to your playstyle because I know a lot of you may not have some of the mods I have and I know there's some mods that I do not have that some of you may have that have been playing for a really long time. I kind of got into playing again about six months ago after playing for the first year of the game being released. I played up to Forsaken and then I kind of quit after that. So I don't have access to some of the mods. So make sure if you are new to the game, if you're brand new, just started playing, make sure you're checking Ada every day because she does sell a lot of good mods. And there's a couple that I'm kind of on the lookout for from her for this build and for some of my other void builds that I'm going to mention here in a second when we get into the mods itself. But just remember, you can take this and kind of fit it to your play style. There's a lot of different ways you can build the glaive and, and have a lot of fun with it on any character, but it is so much fun on the hunter. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. First of all, we're going to be running, of course, the Void class with Mobius Quiver. When it comes to the abilities, I'm running Marksman's Dodge, Triple Jump, Snare Bomb, and Vortex Grenade. Grenade is personal preference. Run whatever you like. I just really enjoy the Vortex Grenade uh, on all of my characters, Hunter, Warlock, and Titan. When it comes to aspects, we have Vanishing Steps. Now, this is going to, uh, your dodge is going to make you go invisible. This is almost your panic button because we're going to be able to stay invisible a lot without this pretty much the whole time. But sometimes something may go wrong. You may need to reload. So having vanishing steps available is really handy. Also, I'm running Stylish uh, Executioner. Stylish Executioner is going to give you defeating a weakened, suppressed, or volatile target grants invisibility and true sight. So you're going to go invisible after defeating that target. And your true sight is actually going to make all the enemies around you kind of glow red. So you're going to know exactly where they're located. So you kind of can uh, position yourself to get into another fight really quickly. After performing a stylish execution, your next melee grenade, or your next melee attack, excuse me, while invisible, weakens target. So this is very handy. Keep that in mind. When it comes to fragments, echo of persistence, void buffs applied to you. So that's invisibility, overshield, and devour have increased duration. When it comes to echo of undermining, your void grenades weaken targets. Now this is a really great fragment but a lot of people don't like it because it gives you that negative 20 discipline as you're going to see here in the gameplay at the end of the video uh the discipline really doesn't matter my discipline is not that high and i'm getting my grenade back really quickly because of some other things we are running here so echo of undermining is a great one to have when it comes to echo of remnants this gives your lingering grenade effects so vortex void wall void spot and axion bolt have increased duration and when it comes to echo of leeching Melee final blows start health regeneration for you and nearby allies. So it's very handy for you and your teammates. And this is going to give you plus 10 resilience. The reason I like running this is because you're up close and personal with the glaive. I'm shooting the glaive every once in a while, mainly using the shield and the melee the entire time because I'm invisible. I can just run around, suppress, you know, and kind of, you know, debuff enemies and just be beat them up really, really quickly. Now, when it comes to some other mods or a fragments you could run there's a lot of different things you can try out here there are some yet we do not have unlocked that will be coming out when the raid is released on march the 5th so you may want to tweak this and kind of fit it to what you want but these are some really good ones to try out to begin with if you're looking just to kind of get a hunter glaive build going now when it comes to what i'm running your primary does not really matter i'm running the peace of mind pulse rifle just because i really like it sometimes i'll throw a scout rifle on here if it's needed for some harder content for champions a submachine gun, whatever the case may be. When it comes to my glaive, now there is one thing that I want to change about this, and I'll tell you here in just a second, it is kill clip. I want to use this or change this to something else, but my glaive is just not quite high enough level yet to change this perk out. But when it comes to everything else, it's set up how I want it. Super cooled accelerator, light mag, impulse amplifier. I want to drop kill, uh, kill clip for rampage. I think rampage will be really good uh, the way I'm using this uh, with, you know, kind of being up close and personal and defeating enemies really quickly. Kill clips, just really not that great. Uh, but like I said, it's the only thing I had available to me right here in this spot until I get this thing leveled up a little bit more. Like I said, only being level 13. So if you have a higher level one, I would recommend running Rampage. Now, when it comes to what I'm running here in my mod slot, you can run major spec, you could run boss spec, you could run minor spec, whatever you like. I just like major spec. It seems to work pretty well on some yellow bars. When it comes to my heavy weapon, I'm using the Parasite. The Parasite Grenade Launcher is one of the best exotics for me personally. It may not be for everyone in mobile fights. 
Uh, the Gallahorn is really, really good as well. Don't get me wrong. Sleeper is still really great. There's a lot of great exotics out there that you could kind of fit into this any way you wanted. But for me personally, running around like I am with this build, being invisible, having really high mobility, the Parasite is the way to go. Uh, that's what I like to use. And it absolutely annihilates pretty much everything you come across. As you can see, I already have 1,400 kills with it, so I do really like it. Now, when it comes to my stats, I went for higher mobility, as you can see, and a little bit of a resistance. Of course, we did get plus 10 resistance with one of those fragments. Recovery, you could spec more into recovery if you prefer that. And when it comes to discipline, as I said, I only have 61 discipline, but as you're going to see in the gameplay, with the mods running in our gear, you're getting that grenade back really quickly. Now, two mods that I do not have that I'm going to look for from Ada uh, in the future whenever she sells them that I think would work well with this build and in a lot of other Void builds in Void 3.0 are going to be Well of Tenacity. So if you have Well of Tenacity, you may want to try that out. That's picking up a Void Elemental Well reduces the damage you take from combatants for a short period of time. Now, this actually got something kind of added to it uh, this season. Well of Tenacity actually gives you that 50% damage resistance buff that you used to get from Protective Light. Protective Light now is back down to a 10% damage buff. And as we all know, Protective Light has pretty much been nerfed and it's useless. So if you're wanting something for some damage resistance, and you probably do need that with this build because you're so close to these enemies, Well of Tenacity will be a great one to pick up. Now, when it comes to another really good Void uh, mod, Reaping Wellmaker. After activating your class ability, your next weapon final blow on a combatant spawns a Void Elemental Well. So you actually can just hit your invisibility dodge real quick, defeat an enemy, and you're going to get that Void Elemental Well. So that works really well. Also, so if you do not have those two, I would recommend be like, kind of be like I am. Be on, the, be on the lookout for those from Ada. If you do have those two already, if you played in those seasons and have access to those, definitely try those out on this build. I think it would work very well. Now, when it comes to what I'm running personally, on my helmet here, I'm running Grenade Launcher Ammo Finder, uh, Ashes to Assets, and Font of Might. Of course, Font of Might is a, a mod within the artifact this year. Uh, of course, we do have access to it normally, but of course, normally it is four points. With, with it being in the artifact, now it is only one point, and so that is a great one to use. Picking up an elemental well that matches your subclass energy type grants a temporary bonus to weapon damage of that same element. So once again, we're running the Void Glaive here, so we're getting that bonus damage uh, with this Glaive from that Font of Might. Now, when it comes to my arms, I'm running, of course, my mods for, you know, your champions and things like that. So I'm running Unstoppable Glaive and then whatever we need here. You know, you need your Anti-Barrier, your Overload Rounds, whatever you want. If you're not needing uh, these here, you could double slot bolstering detonation which grants class ability energy when you cause damage with a grenade that helps out a lot you could run something like fastball and here on the end i'm running glaive dexterity so just kind of match these to what you need now of course unstoppable glaive is one that i would recommend from the artifact if you're going to run uh you know this build and glaive dexterity as well when it comes to my chest piece i'm running a couple new artifact or another new art artifact mod here which is thermoshock plating which reduces incoming solar damage and incoming arc damage I'm also running a Grenade Launcher Reserve and Elemental Armaments. Combatant Weapon Final Blows with a damage type that matches your subclass. Element have an escalating chance to spawn another Elemental Well. So that's another way I can get wells with this since I am using that Void Glaive. You could drop something like the Grenade Launcher Ammo and put a Void Resistance on. Your, concuss uh, your Concussive Dampener. Like I said, I want you guys to take this and kind of mold it to your playstyle and what you're looking for. Just kind of want to give you an idea of what I'm using and how good this can be. Now, when it comes to my boots, I am running Frosties. You could run something like the Orpheus Rig. You could run the Six Coyote Chest Piece. There's a lot of different options here with uh, the exotics you can run. Personally, I go with the Frosties because sprinting gives energy. Dodging speeds up that energy, and I'm all about this being fast, getting up in the enemy's face, defeating them really quickly, and getting out. So that's kind of why I'm running the Frosties. I have some different things here. And like I said, you could have these as void and run some of those void mods I was talking about to begin with that I do not have yet. But if you don't have access to that, you know, you could try some different things here. The main thing, in my opinion, would be Glaive Scavenger from the Artifact and Elemental Ordnance. Elemental Ordnance is defeating a combatant with a grenade, spawns an elemental well that matches your subclass energy type. Once again, another way to get that void well. And I just have this thrown on here, just reducing grenade cooldown each time you pick up an orb of power. Not really easy to pick up orbs now, considering they have kind of changed how orbs work. There's a lot of different things you could put here. If this was a void piece, there's some different different things you could go with that would probably be a little bit better than this. 
Now, when it comes to my class item, uh, this is where I'm running two other of two other new class mods from the artifact or mods just in general that come with the artifact that we all are going to have access to energy vampirism, which gives you gain energy for your least charged ability. When you suppress a target, this is the way that I'm getting that grenade back very quickly because every time I'm hitting a target with this grenade uh, or with my glaive is suppressing them. So I'm getting that grenade energy back really quick. So that's why you really don't need a lot of discipline. And right here, I'm running Suppressive Glaive. Damaging combatants with your glaive suppresses them, preventing them from using abilities for a short time, which is handy because you don't take as much damage, but also is kind of working, uh, you know, with this energy vampirism. Another really good thing you could put here would be maybe Overload Grenades. You also could put Suppression Mastery. You could put either one of these two out of the uh, artifact in as well. So all of these mods that I've kind of been talking about from the artifact would be ones that I would recommend getting if you have access to them already. But suppression mastery, suppression effects you create have a longer or increased duration would be another really good one to use. But these two are pretty much a must in my opinion. On your cloak, they work very, very well. And like I said, if you guys kind of want to see what I've got here unlocked on my artifact, you kind of can see everything. Ones that I would highly recommend unlocking for this would be Glaive Dexterity, Glaive Scavenger, your, um, you know, your Energy Vampirism, your Suppression Mastery, if you would like to try that out, Unstoppable Glaive, and Suppressive Glaive. Those are ones that I think are really needed. But like I said, you can try anything you want. That's what's great about the artifact. At least we have all, all have access to these mods. It's not something you have to wait to buy from someone. We all have access to these just from playing and ranking up your artifact in general. Now we'll get into a little bit of gameplay so I can show you guys exactly how well this works. And I think if you're really good with it, you can use it in some very difficult content very easily and pretty much walk through everything. All right, this is a well spring that I did yesterday. Ended up with like 101 kills with this glaive. And this thing's a lot of fun. As you can see, I'm pretty much just staying invisible the entire time. And as I use my grenade, like I said, you can get your grenade back really quickly with those mods. You don't really have to worry about specking too much into discipline. You can put more into resilience. You can put more into mobilities, which I, what is what I did. You can put more into recovery. Um, like I said, some enemies are going to have, you know, different abilities. They're going to be able to stomp you. They're going to be able to have effects around them that can really hurt if you're up close and personal. So some of those void mods that I talked about that I don't have yet that some of you may not have uh, that give you a little bit more resistance may help out a lot. But as you can see, this thing is pretty much just insane. It's stunning everything, you know, kind of debuffing all the enemies you're fighting against. And you're able to just pretty much destroy everything that you come in contact with. Now, if you're against a boss or something like that, you may want to use the glaive to shoot. You may need to use your shield on this glaive. Don't forget you have that shield as well. You also may need to use your, your primary or your heavy. But for most enemies you're going to come across, you can sit here and just absolutely melee them to death. And if you're a big fan of using a sword class or, in, or you know, a sword in Destiny as your heavy, just kind of imagine this as a class with a sword that you can use nonstop. Anyway, guys, let me comment your thoughts. And of course, if you liked it, the like, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And I'll catch you next time. Peace.